Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Loyola Academy Virtual College Fair. My name is Lucy. I will be your ShriveScan facilitator this evening. Um, just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Just make sure you say at and then whichever school your question is for. Your camera and microphone are off, um, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions that are happening this evening. There's another set of sessions that happen in about 45 minutes. Um, the session is also being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash Loyola. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our presenters. So first, we will hear from Lawrence Technolo Technological University. All right. All right, welcome everybody. Hello, my name is Jill Homerding and I'm the Chicago Regional Admissions Counselor for Lawrence Technological University, or as we often say, Lawrence Tech or LTU. Uh, so you'll be hearing me use those names throughout the presentation. Uh, to start, LTU is a private school, um, a private university with a heavy focus on STEM. Lawrence Tech is located in Southfield, Michigan, which is um, about 20 miles northwest of downtown Detroit and about five hours from the Chicagoland area. Uh, Southfield is the nation's number one region for engineering, architecture, and technology. Our size, um, we're a small school, so to be more specific, we have about 2,500 undergraduate students and 11 to one is our student to faculty ratio and our average class size is 15 students. Additionally, all of our courses are taught by faculty, so you'll never have a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant. Um, and just a quick history lesson, we were founded in 1932 by the Lawrence Brothers as a College of Engineering. So our first campus was actually adjacent to the Henry Ford Model T plant. Um, and so their idea was that the workers could work at the plant during the day and come to school in the evening so that what they were learning in the classroom, they could actually apply that um, right on the job. And then that developed into a model that we still hold true to this day um, on our campus, and that is theory and practice. And so what I mean by theory and practice is that our students are not only getting a base of theoretical knowledge to be successful, um, but then they're getting that hands-on education and experience from day one. Um, all of our programs are direct admit, so students are getting in the studios and the labs freshman year, first semester, and jumping right in, getting their hands dirty. Um, other ways that we carry out our motto of theory and practice are through co-ops and internships, um, undergraduate research opportunities, and one of my favorite aspects about LTU that students get to utilize, LTU zone. So what is LTU Zone, you might ask? Well, technological is our middle name. Um, so we like to really incorporate technology in everything that we do. So LTU Zone is our campus laptop program for our students. Um, it's included in tuition. But it's not just any laptop. It's a high-end laptop loaded with industry standard software that's designed specifically for your major. And because it's professional grade software, it's the same as what companies are using. So you don't, you know, um, you don't have to be taught when you go to that job or internship. Um, so you have a leg up when applying for those jobs and internships because um, you already know the software. Um, it's not required, but a lot of our students do take advantage of this awesome program. All right, so moving on to campus life. Uh, we still have a lot to offer on our campus, even though we're a small school. We have over 60 clubs and organizations, so there's always something to do on campus to get involved. We have Greek life, cultural organizations, professional organizations, special interest groups. Another thing I like to mention when talking about campus life is that anyone can have a car on campus, uh, freshmen included, and parking is absolutely free. Um, for those of you that would choose not to bring a car, there is an Amtrak train that goes from the various Chicagoland locations to the town right next door to Southfield, which is called Royal Oak. Um, so that's where a lot of our out-of-state students from the Midwest, especially, um, you know, they'll utilize the Amtrak to get um, back and forth from home. Um, and in regards to athletics, we do have over 30 men and women's varsity athletic teams. Um, you can see them listed on the screen. Uh, we're part of the NAIA, which means that you can receive scholarship for your sport. Um, and I do like to point out this does include our marching band, drumline, dance team, and color guard. So if you so you can also earn scholarships for those opportunities as well. And if you're interested in playing a varsity sport, you can go to ltuathletics.com and fill out a recruitment form. Now, moving on, um, to talk kind of about scholarships. Uh, we do have uh, academic merit scholarships uh, that we offer, and you'll see over on the blue box on the right-hand side of the screen, um, our academic scholarships, you're automatically reviewed for upon acceptance, so there isn't a separate application process for that. Um, and we actually also have an out-of-state scholarship for all of, the, all of you that are with me in the great state of Illinois. Um, so essentially, if you're admitted, you will receive this out-of-state scholarship, which is $5,000 annually, and you can receive two scholarships from us, so you can stack this out-of-state scholarship that you would receive on top of another scholarship that you might receive. 
Um, now switching gears to the admission side of things, um, to apply, we are on the Common App and also have our own application on our website. Um, we need your official high school transcript sent directly from your high school and a personal essay. We are going fully test optional for 2022 again. Um, so you don't need to submit your test score to be considered uh, for both admissions and for merit-based scholarship. Um, additionally, we are rolling admission, but we really recommend applying you know, as early as you can just to make sure that you secure your scholarships. Um, then you can see on the right side of the screen a list of our academic majors um, underneath the colleges that they're housed in. Um, so the colleges that we have on campus are our College of Architecture and Design, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Business and Information Technology, and our College of Engineering. And then to wrap things up, visit if you can, either virtually or in person. Um, we're offering daily tours on campus if you're comfortable with that, um, but we do have a wide range of virtual opportunities. If you go to ltu.edu backslash future students backslash calendar, which you'll see under my information, um, you can see all the virtual events specifically customized for what you're looking for. And then I've included my contact information on the screen as well. So please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Next up, we will hear from Bowling Green State University. All right, well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Drew Small, and I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor here at Bowling Green State University, which means I'm based right here in the Chicagoland area. Um, but uh, Bowling Green State University is a four-year public institution about four hours away, right in Northwest Ohio. Uh, we are actually ranked one of the top college towns in the United States. The two things that we're ranked highest on is affordability and safety. So downtown is about a five to 10 minute walk away from the university. There's buy and get free burger nights, 35 cent wings, 50 cent tacos. So if you're looking for that really kind of college town experience, Bowling Green State University will be a great option. The population itself is about 32,000. So it's not a small village. It is actually a town with a main street and all those things. Um, but one of our, our biggest conveniences is that we are located right off I-75, an easy drive to Columbus, Cincinnati, Cleveland, downtown Detroit is about an hour and 10 minutes away. And so for students that want that college and experience, but when you're kind of looking to go off and, and get that internship or research opportunities, you have that right in our backyard. Now, our campus is quite unique. We have about 16,000 undergraduate students, which makes us in that kind of like that Goldilocks zone between that small private university and a larger public institution. But what's nice is that we don't sacrifice when it comes to our campus diversity. We have students from all over the country, 70 plus countries across the globe, about 20% of our incoming class comes from a racially or ethnically diverse background. Same thing with our academic programs. We're very diverse, having over 200 different academic programs, ranging from our College of Education, which we're the top teacher producer in the state of Ohio, everything from early child education all the way up to high school education, foreign languages, art education, music education. But we also have one of the top College of Businesses in the state of Ohio. We rank number one for accounting specifically, and then number 14 in the country for supply chain management. We have one of the very few dual degree programs with a partnership with the University of Strasbourg, France, and so it gives our students a great opportunity to study abroad as well as obtaining an additional degree while you're at Bowling Green State University. We're one of five accredited architecture programs in the state of Ohio. We have forensic sciences, forensic biology, chemistry, examination. We're actually one of four universities in the country to have an active crime lab on our campus. We even have an airport on campus, and so if students want to study aviation, you can do that right here at Bowling Green State University and walk to our airport. Another really cool aspect is that we get students inside the cockpit that very first semester that they're on campus. And so I don't know if any of you are aviation majors, but I think that speaks volumes in terms of our student engagement on campus from that very first semester, whether you're aviation, uh, architecture, whatever it may be, it's very project focused here at Bowling Green State University. Some of our newer programs, we are adding a systems engineering program. It's our first true engineering program at Bowling Green State University. We just launched an extension of our School of Nursing where we're actually gonna house that on our campus. And then we also are building a pre-PT or physical therapy track, as well as a pharmacy farm D partnership with the University of Finley. And so some really great things are, that are going on at Bowling Green State University when it comes to our, our academic programs. Now we do have a deciding student program. So if students can't really choose exactly what they wanna study before coming to campus, this deciding student program will actually help you out with that. Across all majors, we actually have something called life design. And what life design does is it provides a life design coach for you that will sit down and really ask you those tough questions, not more than really what you wanna be when you grow up, but figure out what are all those important things when it comes to tackling and making the most of your four years on campus. So not only will you have an academic advisor by your side, you'll actually have a life design coach that is there to help you and say, okay, here's how we can get involved on campus. Here's what we need to do when it comes to professional development. 
Speaking of professional development, we have the Falcon Internship Guarantee. This program is really unlike any other in the state of Ohio. We guarantee that within this program from that very first semester, we're helping you build your resume, write that cover letter, doing mock interviews, doing networking events on and off campus. And so from that very first semester on campus, we're gonna be doing a crash course. We're gonna be preparing you for the internship, whether it's in year two, year three, or year four, we wanna make sure that you have all those tools to succeed. Talking about research on campus, Bowling Green actually ranks in the top 10 in the country for funding undergraduate research. We actually have a marine biology program on our campus. And so if we can't offer that, that you know, experience right in our backyard, again, going back to traveling, being so close to some major metropolitan areas, really gives Bowling Green an advantage to have some of these really great programs, but also allow our students to have those resources on campus. And you know what's really nice is that the proof is in the pudding. 97% of our graduates are either employed, are in graduate school, or started their own business within six months of graduation. Getting involved is a huge aspect of campus. I'm sure that every single institution will touch on their involvement, in, but that's one of the things that I think that really stands out with Bowling Green State University. Over 400 student-run organizations, Division I athletics, all your sporting events are free to students on campus. Some of our main sports are football, basketball, men's Division I ice hockey. We have perennially a very strong women's soccer team on campus, back-to-back to back MAC champions. And so sports are a huge deal on our campus and it's nice that students can go support other students without having to worry about season tickets. Greek life, about 15 to 20% of our student population is involved in Greek life, as well as community service is a huge portion or a huge part of who we are. Now our application deadline or our applications timeline is very straightforward. Our application is through our website as well as through the common application. We do have a $45 application fee, but a lot of times we run special events throughout the year where we can go ahead and waive that $45. As of right now, we're still looking at the landscape and seeing exactly what that test score requirement will be. I am feeling that we will have a test, op test optional pathway for students as well. And so really making sure that that application is submitted since we are rolling admissions earlier on in the process. So then that way we can work together to look at scholarships and other opportunities for students. Visiting campus is one of the most important things that you can do throughout your college experience. I encourage you to come visit us here at Bowling Green State University. We are open for in-person visits as well as catering or offering some amazing virtual options as well. Here's my contact information. Like I said, I am the regional admissions counselor in Chicago, but I recruit the entire state of Illinois. And hopefully you learn a little bit more about BGSU and go Falcons. Thank you. And then next up, we will hear from Miami University. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Chase. Hello, Loyola um, Academy. I hope you are well. I'm going to open up and share my screen here so I can show you some images of Miami. Just one second. There we go. I hope you can see everything and carry forward here. Let's get rolling. Um, so those of you from Loyola very well might know Miami. Um, I was just checking while Drew was talking about Bowling Green, 117 applications from uh, Loyola seniors to Miami University this year. So if you have friends that are seniors, wow, chances are good they might have applied to Miami. Um, so pick their brain as you're going forward here. If Miami ends up being on your list too, certainly you know ask them what drew them to Miami or if they end up at Miami, ask them why. Um, Miami is a public school in Southwest Ohio. So we are about five hours away from you in Chicago. Um, we are in a little town called Oxford, Ohio, which is a true college campus, college community, much like Drew was talking about with Bowling Green. Um, I'll show you a lot of images of Miami. This is one aerial shot of our campus in Oxford. Um, our town is kind of, Miami's the main attraction there. So we have a lot of um, beautiful red brick buildings. It's kind of our staple at Miami, all the architecture is the same. So all of our buildings match and um, it's kind of this Georgian style of architecture that's just gorgeous. So lots of uh, lots of beautiful scenes and postcard like stuff at Miami. Um, 17,000 undergrad students join us every year and roughly 2,000 graduate students. So um, that is an interesting division. Um, typically there are more graduate students on a campus of our size, but we are uniquely an undergrad focused institution. So um, you won't see a lot of graduate students on campus. You won't see a a lot of teaching assistants, a lot of grad assistants in classes. Classes are predominantly taught by professors at Miami and professors that get to know you pretty well. Our average class size is 30 students. So um, you're not gonna be in that 500 person lecture hall at Miami. We really have um, quite a few ways for you to get to connect with your professors and get to know them in a smaller classroom setting. So um, we are geographically speaking, um, kind of more of a rural campus. We draw students from across the country. So um, about half of our students are from the state of Ohio at Miami. The other half are from 
the rest of the world. Um, we literally have students from every one of the 50 states and many countries across the world. So you will likely meet people from outside of Ohio and outside of Illinois when you're at Miami and um, you know have that really rich geographic diversity too. Um, sharing a little bit about academics and what we're known for, uh, we are a liberal arts institution. So any major that you choose at Miami, you're gonna have a core of liberal arts curriculum in there too. Um, we are very well recognized for study abroad. About half of our students will study abroad every year. We have a campus in Luxembourg that our students often go to, but outside of Luxembourg, um, we have students in over 90 different countries at any given moment. So lots of great stuff there. If you're a science student or a social science student, we have a lot of great undergraduate research opportunities for you as early as your freshman year. If that's something you want to be involved in, there are about 2,600 students doing undergrad research each year. So a lot of cool things that you can study, not only um, in the science field, but even in business or in education, there's a lot of cool research being done. Um, and also I like to mention this about client projects. Um, we have an agreement with any um, clients that our, our students work with. So for example, um, Procter & Gamble comes out of Cincinnati and comes up sometimes and works with students in classes. So if you're a business student, marketing, communications, um, KeyBank comes up and works with our students. Um, Kroger comes and works with our students regularly. And one of the neat things that Miami students do um, when they're working on client projects, the clients, the, the corporations that work with our students have to sign an agreement saying that they will use our student work in a, not just a, you did this for a project kind of way, but a real way in their in their corporate setting. So our students often work right hand in hand, even as freshmen with business prospects or with nonprofits or things when you're, you know, again, learning by doing in addition to learning in a lecture setting. So um, you'll see quickly here, I want to flip through these pages quickly so you can see our five different colleges, which I think these are kind of self-explanatory. So we'll show you those, but then um, additionally, our list of majors. Um, Miami is well known for our business school. We have an excellent undergrad engineering program. We have great education programs. Um, and like I mentioned, we have this amazing study abroad program that really applies to any student. So um, we're one of those schools though that's you know across the board, lots of good options and no real rules at Miami when it comes to combining different interests. So if you wanna study fashion at the same time you're studying chemical engineering, and at the same time you're involved in a music extracurricular activity, you can do that. That's very realistic and very the norm at Miami that students combine a lot of different weird interests together and make a degree that really works for them. So lots of options here. Um, we have quite a few honors opportunities. I, you guys are in such a college prep environment at Loyola that I would definitely encourage you to apply for our honors programs. That application is separate from your Common App in the fall, but you submit it right after you send your Common App to us and you'll see more about that you know, going forward as you're applying. Um, just to talk for a minute about campus life, because we're kind of short on time. Um, our students do live in our residence halls for roughly two years. Um, most of our students stay on campus, of course, required to freshman year, and then most are required to again sophomore year. So we have a great residential community. Our campus is very residential. So our students stick around on weekends. They're active. They're involved in you know over 600 student organizations. So you'll see here, um, we are D1 athletically, much like Bowling Green in the MAC conference, which is kind of represented in the <laughs> final four tournament this year, um, but lots of of, uh, club sports, intramural sports, um, you know, religious organizations to be a part of. Um, additionally, uh, Greek life is uh, fairly large at Miami. About 30% of our students are involved in Greek life too. So looks like my time is coming to a close here. So I want to wrap up and encourage you to apply with the Common App to Miami in the fall. Um, we have just recently announced we will be test optional for next year and our priority deadline for everything is December 1st. So thank you so much. I'm in Naviance. If you need anything, please be in touch. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. Next up, we will hear from Iowa State State University. Hey, hello, everybody. My name is Kelly Allen. I'm one of two regional representatives in the Chicago area for Iowa State University, which is a tier one research university in the center of the state of Iowa. We have a tremendous number of students that come to the university from Illinois. It's actually the second largest total group on campus. So yeah, yes, there's a lot of people uh, from Illinois in total, but the Chicago area and the suburbs in specific. And we, this is pretty much what campus looks like, that picture prior. Kind of a surprising thing that people think the center of Iowa is nothing but corn, and that's not at all the case. We're about a four and a half to five, like four and a half to six hour drive, excuse me, from the Chicago area, depending on where you're leaving from. I live in the Chicago area in the Northwest suburbs in the Algonquin Crystal Lake area. It takes me about five and a half hours to get to campus. So by virtue of just the sheer number of people from the Chicago area that are on campus, we work with a bus company that sells round trip tickets for students coming back home 
for the three main holiday breaks. It'd be Thanksgiving, winter, and spring breaks. You get a bus ride back to the Chicago area. You go to the drop-off point and then you return to that drop-off point as break is finishing and we bus you back to campus. So it's kind of a nice thing to that you have that. You can bring a car. We kind of discourage it because we are very much a residential campus. You can walk everywhere you need to go, side to side, any direction. We'll get you um, anywhere you need to go about 15 minutes. So there's no great place to park. You bring a car as a freshman, you get to park at the football stadium. So not the closest thing because it's really not necessary. So know that you don't have to have that type of um, equipment with you. But let me give you an idea of where we're located um, in general. We're about a three and a half hour drive south of the Twin Cities, about a three and a half hour drive north of Kansas City. So some large metro areas, not too terribly far from campus and then Chicago, of course. We are, again, a research university. We have a federal research lab on campus. We also have a research park in the city of Ames. Our full name is actually Iowa State University of Science and Technology. We're kind of a quirky s and school because in addition to engineering, which is kind of our claim to fame, we have 14 different majors in our College of Engineering and the hard sciences as well. Um, look at this one too, that we have 96% of our students do get a job within six months of graduation. Um, that's pretty standard. And we have the first public veterinary medicine school, but we also have a full college of business and a full college of design, which is kind of unique and unusual for an s and school. We also have a lot of different career fairs that we do offer to students. There's six undergraduate colleges. Each one of those has one, if not two career fairs they manage and provide to students where you have a chance to meet people in, in the industry right there on campus. Kind of a nice feature to know you have to, don't have to go and seek them out, they come to you. And kind of a quirky thing too, I talked about how we're kind of a unique s and school. This is one stat that kind of stands out to people too. Our uh, apparel merchandising and design major is ranked number five. So that's kind of a thing you wouldn't expect at an s and school. This is a list of all of our colleges, College of Agriculture and Life Science, College of Business, the College of Design, College of Engineering, College of Human Sciences, which is home to the School of Education, and the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which is home to the Greenleaf School of Journalism, of which I'm an alum. There's more six colleges, two schools, and more than 100 programs of study. We are, again, a tier one research university, so you can be involved in research in pretty much anything you could think of, and that can start as early as your freshman year. Of this list of majors, more than 58 of them are classified as STEM programs that be science, technology, engineering, and math. And we are very much a residential campus. We don't require you to live on campus as a freshman and my mother's heart goes, oh really? But we really do strongly encourage it to the point that we're probably annoying, I think on purpose because we strongly believe in the system we have set up for students to access, to live on campus, everything that we have the 15 residence halls, all the dining centers, all the education buildings, again, are on campus. So it just makes life easier when you do live there. Um, there's a couple of different settings too, as far as upper division housing for people who are 19 and older. Our sororities and fraternities, about 15% of our student population are in the Greek system. And we also have off-campus housing throughout the university um, system as well. And you have to work very hard to go hungry. There's the core requirements that we look for in an applicant. Pretty standard as far as graduating from a public high school, four years, each, four years of English, three years each of math and science, two years of social studies. If you're going into a college, excuse me, a major in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, they require a third year. And then LAS and engineering are the only two schools that require foreign language for admission. We use this formula, all three public schools in the state of Iowa do to calculate a score for you. If you have an SAT or an ACT score you want to provide to us, you can. It's not required because we are test optional again for the fall 22 class. We look more heavily at your high school GPA and classes if you don't have a test score. And we're also a part of the Common App. We have plenty of opportunities for students to give us information about their AP scores and let us consider that for college credit. We also have a system called Transit. So if any of you have done um, dual credit or have gone to a community college to get classes, you can look to transfer those classes to us as well. We are on rolling admission. We do have a $40 application fee. The application for the class of fall, excuse me, the fall 22 class will go live on July 1st. If you do have a test score you provide to us, you'll have rapid response, meaning you'll know from us in like 24 hours or less as to your admission. And there's also something called CAP to give us information about what your classes are currently and what your admissibility looks to be um, from Iowa State. So lots of things to do that way. This is me. Um, this is my information. Again, I'm one of two community, excuse me, two advisors uh, for the university, but you can reach out to me and we'd be more than happy to help you. And thanks for joining us tonight.
Thank you. Next up, we will hear from Northwestern. Excuse me. Next up, we will hear from Northwestern University. Hey, everybody. My name is Henry, and I'm a graduate counselor at Northwestern University. I'm originally from Norwich, Vermont, and I'm very lucky to have my friend Jordan presenting with me tonight. Hi, everyone. I'm Jordan. I'm a current senior at Northwestern in our School of Education and Social Policy. Fabulous. All right, I got a couple of slides here. So bear with me while I make sure that my screen is sharing correctly. There we go. All right, so big hike from Loyola Academy, I know to get to Northwestern University, um, but we're located in Evanston, Illinois. So not too far from y'all. We do have six different undergraduate schools here at Northwestern. So whether you wanna be like my friend Tommy and take a deep dive into computer science in the McCormick School of Engineering, or if you're like me, maybe you're a learning sciences major in the School of Education and Social Policy with another major in English in Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, and then a little bit of a theater minor sneaking in there from the School of Communications. Uh, our other schools that we offer are the Beenan School of Music, as well as the Medill School of Journalism, Media, Integrated Marketing, Communications. So across this six school model, um, we do have the quarter system at Northwestern University, which allows students a little bit more flexibility uh, to take a variety of courses um, across disciplines as opposed to the semester model that we used to have. Jordan, would you like to speak a little about the student experience uh, and collaboration opportunities at Northwestern? Absolutely, yes. So. Northwestern has over 500 uh, student organizations, which range from philanthropic, uh, service-oriented or organizations to performance-centered organizations. I myself am part of a over 100-person dance group on campus, um, which is a really great community. Um, there's plenty of uh, over 100 culturally focused student groups. So things such as Hillel for Jewish Students Defined Community or the Black House, things like that. 40 plus student groups that are politically focused. So if you're really interested in pursuing politics, either in a student club or in your major, something like that, there's always opportunities for that. Our acapella uh, community is a really big presence on campus with over 15 groups. And we are also a big 10 school. So you will always find people going to tailgates and football games on the weekends um, and being very supportive of our Northwestern football team. Go, cats, go. I had to. Love the Big Ten sports scene. Thank you so much, Jordan. And another important thing to highlight about Northwestern is just our emphasis on experiential learning. So we do offer $3.5 million a year to undergraduate researchers alone. Whether you're coming in with no research experience whatsoever, like I did, and taking advantage of our undergraduate research apprentice program, getting paired with a faculty member to teach you how to code or do um, interview protocol, we are going to fund it and make sure your dreams happen. We also have over 150 study abroad opportunities due to the uh, emphasis on global learning at Northwestern. For students in the Souk School of Education and Social Policy, for instance, Jordan and I have a global engagement requirement where we can choose to either go and study abroad for a term or uh, learn a world language instead, or do both, which is what I did, uh, because I couldn't resist saying no to Rivka Cook's Spanish class. She lives in Allison Hall, one of our residential uh, locations. All right. Lastly, uh, in terms of accessibility at Northwestern, I just wanted to promote that we are very lucky to meet 100% of students demonstrated financial need entirely loan free. So financial aid packages uh, do not include loans at Northwestern. There is an occasional work study um, put into some of the aid packages, um, but I love my work study job. I got to do a photocopier and hand out candy in a candy bowl in the Sesame Student Affairs office. So we just wanted to promote that as well as take noting of our application deadlines. So if you decide that you wanna to apply to Northwestern early decision, which is a binding agreement, you would apply um, by December, uh, November 1st. And then if you want to take a little more time and think about your choices, we would encourage you to apply to our regular decision, which would be due January 3rd. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at ug-admission at northwestern.edu. Uh, we will answer any questions that came up in your chat. Um, I read applications for New England, but I'm going to be happy to connect you with some of the Illinois directors. Uh, and also, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel because we have a lot of live events going on, so you can be sure to register for those as well. Thank you so much, and go Cats! Thank you. And then finally this evening, we will hear from Hope College. Hi 
everyone. My name is Allison and I am the admissions rep from Hope College that works with students at Loyola Academy. Um, if you haven't heard of Hope before, we are a small private liberal arts Christian college located in Holland, Michigan. Holland's about three hours away from where we are all at in the Chicagoland area. If you're from Michigan, people love to hold their hand up like this to show where they're at in the state and Holland is located right about here. We are 10 minutes away from Holland State Park, which is one of many beaches um, right on Lake Michigan in Holland and just a block away from the downtown area on 8th Street. And 8th Street is full of coffee shops, restaurants, shopping, a movie theater, and a farmer's market, all just a block away from our campus. So there's lots to do in Holland um, and then on Hope's campus as well. So once you get onto campus at Hope, we have about 3,000 students. Um, they, and our class size is about 20 to 25 students per class, and it gets smaller as you continue up through your education. So when it comes to academics at Hope, we follow that liberal arts model, meaning you'll take classes in a wide variety of areas, as well as in your major. So if you have a really specific idea of what you want to study, that's great. And if you have no idea, you have plenty of time to figure it out through taking all of these liberal arts requirements. I like to talk about it in three buckets. So your liberal arts classes, uh, where you'll take history, where, where you'll take math and science, none of those are prescriptive. So you have the choice of taking the classes that sound most interesting to you. So when I was a HOPE student, I didn't want to take biology or chemistry. So I took computer science as my science class. There's a lot of variety and options in terms of your general education requirements. You'll have your major bucket, that's where you'll spend most of your time, and then also a bucket for fun. What do you love to do? Do you love to dance or do you play music? Those are all things that you can do at Hope without being a major or a minor. We have over 90 majors or minors on our campus, including pre-professional programs and the pre-health professions. Our top programs on campus include nursing, education, business, engineering, and all of those pre-health professions. We have a specific pre-health professions advisor on our campus. So if you're looking to go to med school or dental school after your undergraduate degree, you would be in great hands at Hope. We're also a top 20 research institution in the nation, giving our students an opportunity to do hands-on research in the labs from day one. That's one of the things that has actually kept us on campus this entire school year throughout the pandemic. Our students have been in person, living in their residence halls, taking classes uh, next to their classmates, not just on a computer. And that's because of undergraduate research that has kept us together. We have been conducting wastewater testing of various zones on our campus. Students go and collect the samples, test it, um, and that helps to show where on campus we might have traces of COVID-19, um, and we can go in and mitigate that situation. So that's been really neat this year, a fun way um, to you know, keep our community together and also get some really awesome hands-on experiences. Outside of the classroom, our students are really involved in the campus community. That word residential really resonates with me tonight. We have over 80 student organizations you can be a part of, things like Dance Marathon, which is a huge fundraiser uh, for a children's hospital in Grand Rapids, Greek Life, uh, which about 20 or 30 percent of our students participate in at Hope. Um, we're also D3 Athletic School, so our men's and women's basketball team actually holds the D3 attendance record, um, and our women's basketball team absolutely dominated this year, um, so we have a lot of fun athletic energy on our campus, even being a small school. Some traditions that run deep on our campus are between even-year and odd-year students. So if you're a junior, you would graduate from Hope in 2026, making you an odd year. Um, any seniors would be 2020, or even year. Uh, any seniors would be 2025, which is odd year. And so there's little bits of rivalry and traditions that those two classes compete against on our campus, as well as intramural sports, um, tons, of, tons of fun things happening every weekend. People don't go home on the weekends. They really like to stay on campus and hang out with their friends and be a part of the Hope community. Another part of our campus is this faith dimension. I like to explain faith life at Hope much more as an opportunity for you than it ever would be an obligation. So we do offer chapel services Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. They're about 20 minutes long and you'll never have a class during that time. So you're always available to go if you want to. 
but no, no attendance is ever taken and none of these services are ever mandatory. In my experience, I had about a third of friends who went to chapel all the time, never missed a day, a third who went time to time, and that's where I fell in, and a third who never went at all. So if this is something you're looking for, we can certainly offer that to you in a hope experience. And if it's not on your radar, that's okay too. For um, terms of the next steps, our application for the 2022 school year will open up on August 1st. We are also a common application school, so that's probably the easiest way to apply to HOPE. Um, if you're looking to visit our campus, we are open for in-person visits this spring, and that is all found at hope.edu slash visit, and many, many online opportunities as well. So open houses, student panels, you name it, we've got it. We actually have an out-of-state student experience panel happening next week, which would be a great thing for you all to check out. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. That's my email and also my cell phone number. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, everybody, for participating. Um, so we do still have a few minutes left in the session, so I wanted to share. this afternoon or this evening, excuse me. Um, but the question is, give an interesting or fun fact about your school. So we'll start with Lawrence Technological University and go from there. Okay, an interesting or fun fact. Um, I guess I would just say kind of what I already mentioned that uh, because we were started as an engineering school uh, because of the um, uh, the Ford brothers and the Lawrence brothers kind of came together to start our school. That theory and practice is really big on our campus and which kind of leads to that uh, lab laptop program. So really it's an amazing, like if you're an engineering major or an architecture major, these laptops that you're given are incredible with the software. So something to think about that's a pretty unique thing that not, you know, every school offers. Because I'd say that. <laughs> So hopefully when you come and visit campus, uh, you'll you'll quickly realize that Bowling Green State University loves our colors orange and brown. We are the only division one school that is orange and brown. As you can see, very passionate about our colors behind us. But um, a little fun fact is we actually got our colors from a woman's hat. She had an orange hat with a brown feather in it. One of our presidents is like, hey, I like that color scheme. Let's go with that. Um, and the Cleveland Browns use our football facilities when they first started. And as a thank you, they actually used orange and brown because of Bowling Green State University. I was always afraid to say that fun fact because the Browns were never really any good, but now they're getting better. I, I like to share that fun fact a little bit more too. So uh, that orange and brown is something that's very, very, uh, you know, apparent on our campus and that we're very proud of. Drew, I love all that because I grew up about 20 minutes from Bowling Green and my mom went there. So all, I feel like I can share this with her now. So thank you. <laughs> but, um, okay, fun fact about Miami, give you a little history lesson. Um, Miami was founded in 1809 and we were actually founded before Florida, where the other Miami is, was even a state. So that is the big um, fact on our, you know, poster and t-shirt on our campus is Miami was a university before Florida was even a state. Um, of course, they went on to settle Florida and things were a little bigger down there, but still the original Miami, Miami University. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of fun facts, but I'll go with the one that I just wrote for something for the university. Um, if you like Rice Krispie Treats, you have an alumnus of Iowa State University to thank. Mildred Day is a 1928 alumna of Iowa State University, and she came up with the original Rice Krispie Treat recipe when she worked for Kellogg back in the day. So thank you, Mildred. You're a godsend for a sweet treat. So that's my factoid. For Northwestern, uh, we are home to the largest student organized music festival in the country, uh, which I think is pretty cool. It's called Zillow Day. And every spring for one day, everybody stops studying for all their finals and just goes out to our, our huge field that is converted to a stage and listens to musical guests like Dea and uh, Asap Berg came last year and the lakefront is covered with food and games and it's a really great time that we look forward to every year. A fun fact about Hope College is our location in Holland, Michigan. We're really well known for tulips. 
Um, and so we have a Tulip Time Festival that takes place for two weeks every single May, and it always overlaps with Hope's graduation. So not only are the tulips in full bloom, Hope students are graduating, but there's people from all over the country and even from the world that come and visit for Tulip Time. It's a lot of fun and really beautiful. That is awesome. I love all of those fun facts. It's so cool. Thanks everybody for sharing that. Um, so if you, um, there's the sessions just about to finish. So if you have any final questions for our panelists, please feel free to um, use them uh, and leave them in the chat. Um, and then without further ado, I do just want to say a quick thank you um, for all of our panelists and attendees for joining. Um, I'm just going to share my screen one final time just to give you a bit of information. Go. Okay, so again, thank you so much for joining us. And when you do close out of the window, there will be a link to a super quick four question survey. We would appreciate any feedback you can provide. And also, um, there is a, another session that's happening in the next 15 or so minutes. Um, so if you wanted to sign up for that, please feel free. And then in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as other sessions that have happened this afternoon slash this evening at strivescan.com slash Loyola. Uh, so without that, I will say thank you again and have a fantastic evening. Thanks, everybody.